Next, next song is supposed to have an anyway. Secretly, I hate those things. So. It's a song that I never play, and um, it's a song that uh, I wrote uh, a couple years back and got to record with Joel Plaskett uh, in his little studio in, in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, for his, uh, we recorded a little seven-inch, uh, seven-inch vinyl little record, forty-five. Why we did that, I have no idea. It's like let's make a laser disc. Um, Anyway, we have it for sale out there, and they make lovely things to just put on your bookcase or something. But um, the song uh, we seldom play, and I've, uh, I don't think I ever showed it to the band. And it's the only co-write that I've ever done. Um, and it's a real ode to, uh, to friendship. And uh, that's where Joel and I have connected very much, not only just in our friendship um, with one another, but uh, just also our value of that. And I think, you know, we were both lucky guys, and uh, I travel in a circle of friends and people who are all fortunate, you know, we have, uh, I think all of my friends, all my bandmates, parents are still together, and we all grew up with everything we needed, and uh, we never, you know, it's uh, something that's connected us, we, I think we all grew up in the suburbs, and even though we had all the stuff that we needed, uh, you still look for something when you're a teenager, you know, kind of create a problem for yourself because you feel like you need to be, you know, you need to have angst and feel oppressed in some way, especially when you're a musician. So you look for something, and I think it's true, you know, that we, uh, we needed that, and, um, and all, all of us musicians that found each other were, uh, we were all oddballs in some way, even though we were lucky. Um, and this is a song that uh, I sing for Joel and my friends from the local Rabbits. Ben and Ryan and Brian and Jay. And uh, it's kind of a Bob Seger ripoff, but really meant more as a it's meant as a tribute to Boss but comes off as a as a as a, as a Bob Seger tribute. I guess I didn't tell you guys that I met and hung out with Bruce Springsteen in the last week. It's pretty heavy. It was it was insane. I was in Asbury Park. New Jersey. Uh, I went down there when I was 17. Um, first thing I did with my first car that I ever owned, which was an 85 Dodge Aries, brown, tan interior with a full bench seat, which was convenient for uh, parking. <laughs> Just to find the whole deal. Um, and, uh, when I was 17, I went down there on a pilgrimage with my friend Tim. Um, and we went to the boss's house. We went to all the old haunts in Asbury Park where he played, where he grew up, where he was, you know, came up. And we went to his house in Rumsen where he currently resides, or at the time he did, and I think he still does. And we actually rang the doorbell. And it was like a little buzzer on a squawk box. It was like, near. I was like, yes, is Bruce home? And uh, the guy said, get lost. And we did, and we tried to leave some, uh, some like local rabbits paraphernalia, including a gray t-shirt that uh, had the local rabbits written on it, looking like children's handwriting. You'll like see this t-shirt on Bob LaFleur. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob, for that shirt. Bob is Ben Gunning's uncle. And um, so we went down there, and then the, the fall, this is back in 1994, I was 17, and then the following winter, Bruce played at, um, at Place des Arts in Montreal, and it was super cold, and I waited out with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and um, we actually met him, we got to meet him, because it was that cold that people were kind of too afraid of the cold to, uh, to go and say hi to him. So he actually, we were freezing out there outside the, the artist exit, and there was a little foyer, and he waved his uh, Sharpie, kind of like, don't worry, I'm coming, you know? And so he came in and went in, and I gave him a kiss on both cheeks, and I come prepared, like, with, like, Born to Run, I know, my uh, copy of uh, Darkness on the Edge of Town, and a, uh, greetings from Asbury Park in a book, and he signed them all. And uh, so, fast flash forward to this past January, um, I got to meet the man again at a, a wonderful performance that was part of something that was to raise money for Parkinson's research. And I uh, finally got to meet him at the end of a really long night, and I told him about the story. And what he'd said to me way back then, when I said, hey, I went to your house last, last summer, <laughs> and I rang the doorbell. 
And he said, that was you? <laughs> coolest thing, coolest thing you could have said. So I reminded him of that. That was pretty satisfying, I have to say. Anyway, he's, uh, I'm an unabashed Bruce fan. He's my favorite artist. And um, I want to sing this for you as a tribute to all my friendships and uh, to yours. You and me, let's make a band. We'll call it Poor Young Things. Poor Young Things. We'll keep the beat, I'll clap my hands, and we'll both sing. And these will be our glory day. All our songs will be so sad. The poor young things will make them cry and shed the tears that a sad song brings. And these will be our glory day. something to do with you All I want is to have something to do with you Rich old men they run the town they own everything But you can't let them shake you down you poor young thing Cause these will be our glory day Yeah, these will be our glory day All I want is to have something to do with you All I want is to have something to do with you they're all so scared of dealing with poor young things. But if it's theirs, we're stealing. Guys up for one last one. 